Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope I'm loud and clear. Um, if you can't hear me or um, you can't see me, uh, feel free to write a quick message in the message drop down menu, which is located at the right hand side, right at the bottom of the screen. And welcome to this um, presentation organized by the Erasmus Mundus Association. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Ralph Butt for giving me this great opportunity to talk about um, this fascinating topic, uh, which has a couple of themes. Um, our today's topic uh, will focus on the growth of technology startups in the UK, and um, it has a second theme where I will um, discuss you and present our groundbreaking and uh, world-class technology incubator investment company which we recently launched uh, out of Dubai, UAE. It's called Faster Capital. So the topic itself has got a couple of themes. Um, and basically, we will focus on um, the rise of um, um, tech startup scene here in Great Britain, and obviously it's in the second section. Um, they, they basically, they, they run in parallel. So we focus on how Faster Capital, which is a great um, an innovative um, startup um, tech incubator, uh, which was launched in the first quarter of 2014, how we are unique and different. Um, so I'm going to start off with um, generally the, the rise of tech startup scene in this country. I'm based in London, and you can see through the presentation slide a um, bit of bio about myself that I currently um, I am the country representative for Faster Capital and based here in London. And um, apart from this, I am a chartered accountant, qualified accountant as well. And I have other business interests, primarily family wise, mainly in real estate. Faster Capital uh, was launched in, in March 2014 by a serial tech entrepreneur called Hisham Zarak, who happens to be a good friend of mine. Um, and European Commission and Erasmus Mundus, um, um, they organize these kind of monthly uh, um, webinars, and I'm thankful to both of them for giving me this opportunity. Let's kick off with the, with the webinar then. Um, I'll give you a quick flavor of what is happening in terms of technology, um, startup scene, and how tech is really dominating every domain in this country. Um, first of all, uh, in UK, is currently experiencing enormous amount of technology growth and it is really the heart of Europe when we talk about rise of the digital and tech startup. For example, since 2009, there has been 28% growth in technology investment. The UK leads the world, specifically in Europe, where we attract a large number of um, funding, VC funding and seed funding and angel funds as well. Also, in terms of financial technology, London is home uh, to more fintech startups than anywhere else in Europe. Also, um, in terms of national G GDP, uh, technology is, is contributing a huge chunk of money, and currently um, it contributes about 72 billion pounds a year, which is about 5% of the national GDP. The UK is a great market to flourish your tech startup idea. Um, is catching up with Silicon Valley with um, a lot of government interest and investment in the infrastructure. A lot of um, world-class firms have recently um, based their offices here in this country from Airbnb, from Reddit, uh, to LinkedIn, to Facebook, and Google indeed. They have their UK headquarters. Um, also, um, ICT sector generally has simply outperformed every single um, sector of economy contributing nearly 30% uh, in terms of year-on-year year year growth. Um, in terms of um, marketplace, uh, the UK remains the heart of Europe when we talk about technology, um, technology market or industry, and is currently it's gateway to over 5 billion people um, market um, within the EU. Also, a lot of uh, American big tech companies are using London or generally United Kingdom as their UK headquarters to reach out to those markets. Um, 
just to emphasize, the session comprises two chunks of 20 minutes each. First 20 minutes will focus on um, on basically um, the first theme, which is obviously generally how fascinated the UK has become in terms of technology investment and emergence of new technology startups. Um, and then I will try to, to actually articulate and connect a new groundbreaking world-class technology incubator, which we spin out uh, in 2014. It's called FasterCapital.com. And as you can see in slide number one, um, our website address and hyperlink is there for you to explore. Uh, the global headquarters is based in Dubai, and then we have regional offices in the UK, Spain, and the United States. Quickly moving on to the next slide, here basically just a quick um, background of how things have gone and which big uh, technology startup companies have, um, have actually located in London or UK and have chosen the capital to leverage themselves. Uh, you, you should be able to see there are lots of well-recognized names from Microsoft to Foursquare, to Intel, Cisco, Amazon, and then you have Facebook, Twitter, um, and Pinterest as well. So this is just a big, um, big um, a quick snapshot of what is happening across um, this spectrum when you talk about technological um, startups and how they are dominating every other industry at the moment. Um, I also wish to talk about um, other aspects where how, how other things are contributing to digital industries. For example, um, employment uh, is it's creating a mass number of employment um, um, and it's really outperforming every other sec section of the economy. So you name it construction um, to hospitality and tourism. So to, to the tech sector in the UK contributes um, nearly 15% of the overall labor market, which is, which is basically it grew over five times faster than the average UK uh, employment average, which is absolutely fascinating. The current digital landscape in the UK uh, represents that it will continue to grow at 16% per annum until 2016, and basically creating an economy, an internet economy worth 221 billion pounds. Um, apps is a huge market. Um, we have several clusters um, in London, in Birmingham, and Manchester, and Leeds, where alum, and um, Cambridge, Oxford, from where what we are seeing is fascinating number of new um, startups from various domains. So they are um, from healthcare, they are from app development side, they are from hospitality, banking, financial technologies, payment systems and lots of lots of unique um, areas from where they are spinning out and really uh, raising funds from the market and gaining investors' confidence in the process. Now, we understand that obviously the United Kingdom is a great market to be in. Um, technology scene is absolutely marvelous here. Um, and the government is very supportive. There are lots of fundings and infrastructure. Um, facilities are, are on offer from funding to to actually acquiring um, mentorship and training program, lots, lots of incubators and accelerators are around. Um, banks are much more willing to land, plus private sector as well. And of course, we have a very vibrant uh, VC and, and angel investment scene here as well. Um, and obviously, there's lots of investment in infrastructure. Um, also, um, it allows you to really tap into a big pool of uh, potential clients. Um, um, and really collaborate with some of the best um, tech minds um, Europe has to offer. There are currently nearly 160,000 smaller and bigger startups uh, across the country. And this is a huge number, uh, considering the fact that the real growth actually started um, taking place from 2009 onwards. Um, I also wish to emphasize um, um, that technology, media, and telecom companies in London um, and across the country are the economic backbone um, of, um, of the country. So for that we have some really, really good, powerful names um, um, which have grown uh, primarily from the US, but we have some of our homegrown brands as well. So we have got Airbnb, we've got Alibaba, we've got Alcatel, Lucent, we've got AppNexus, ASOS, 
you've got um, um, BuzzFeed, China Mobile, uh, Hawaii, they have set up um, a huge operation in the UK and then obviously we have larger names which is Expedia, you've got Eventbrite, Facebook, Google, Hootsuite, SAP, um, and the name, the list just really goes on, but just to give you a quick snapshot on how many uh, SMEs, medium and large um, multinationals uh, have chosen uh, the UK as their European base, which really demonstrates that they, there's an amazing, uh, they could not have been any better time to launch a tech startup in Europe and they cannot be any other, uh, better, well stationed place with great infrastructure, great uh, tech talent, a very um, favorable investment climate, very favorable government regulation, um, taxation regime, and um, and generally a very positive um, sentiment within which you can really launch your startup and mult and really sort of you know um, capitalize on these favorable um, incentive which are on offer to really leverage your tech startups and grow it to the next to, to the next level. Um, also, um, there are 59 incubator next later in the UK. Um, I want to focus now on on this on the on this incubator I represent. Um, it's called Faster Capital, and as I previously said, it's a uh, it's first of um, first of its kind in concept technology incubator, which really focuses on non technical entrepreneurs. So here. Um, if you look at the general um, landscape, when you talk about uh, incubators from, from Y Combinator to Techstars, generally their application process is, um, is basically inviting younger people or fresh graduates to apply online and then accept applications and then put them into a um, within a mentored uh, environment for a certain period of time, so it could be from three months to six months to up to twelve months, where they are they are given a certain level of money or cash funding and you know business resources, so like mentorship and guidance and all those kind of things. While uh, we at Fast Capital believe that this is this is um, quite a good approach, and uh, indeed it has helped launch some of the biggest uh, companies, tech companies, where we currently use so, so Twitter, Facebook, um, Google back in 1998, Airbnb, um, and then obviously Instagram, and the list just grown up. Um, however, what we found uh, is a niche, and it's a very unique niche, which really, really sets us apart from many, in fact, not even many, in fact, all the other available tech incubators. And I'm going to share on a quick um, Quick light on, on this fact. Um, what we are focusing on is non technical entrepreneurs. So these entrepreneurs, they might have worked in a given industry for 20 years, 10 years, or, or for a certain amount of time. And they have developed a lot of experience in that domain. They have spotted a genuine need to enhance and improve that particular um, industry. But they don't, they don't necessarily have the, the technical capabilities to launch their dream startup and really convert it to, to a next big thing. So they, this is niche market. So here, these entrepreneurs, and non-technical entrepreneurs rather, are focusing on a specific domain um, where they have accumulated a number of years of experience, perhaps decades long experience. And, um, and primarily, these people have the knowledge and they have a spot of the need, but then they don't necessarily have the technical capability. We will step in. At Faster Capital, we believe that we have the capability and access to some, some of the finest mind when it comes to technical development. So our idea is to actually empower non-technical entrepreneurs and build their technical startup on a co-funding and co-founding basis. Um, what that means is that we do not give out 100% cash funding. Instead, we encourage the entrepreneur to share the 50% cost um, of the startup itself. So perhaps if someone has got a brilliant idea, and, but they are non-technical entrepreneur, we encourage them or him or her to submit their idea through our global website, which will then be passed on to ourselves. We will then evaluate it 
and see if the market is already crowded or if there is enough room in the market. Um, and basically, um, from there on, um, if we see that the market um, is not crowded and we, we can make it a good presentable minimum viable product, then I believe um, we will take the idea on board and we will co-develop and co-fund and co-found it with the, with the entrepreneur. And we'll take it to the next level for however long um, it takes. We believe um, that doing so will allow us will allow us plus the entrepreneurial founder of uh, founders to really focus on other key aspects such as sales and really refining the product's features and services and really focusing on business development and marketing and um, since we will take care of the mobile and client side development and web development for the startup we have access to some of the finest minds in terms of technical development and a large pool of really really fantastically talented seasoned um, mentors and advisors and consultants and these people have, have done it themselves so they have this been there done that approach they have built successful businesses that they will then complement um, your existing strengths by multiplying it by really stepping in giving you advice on so we have people in, in legal in HR in business development marketing sales client services finance accounting and law. So all these uh, business complementary services will actually facilitate um, a technical startup and really take it to the next level, thereby allowing technical, um, non-technical rather, entrepreneur to focus on other key features. Um, we are a global firm and we have done it tremendously well in the last um, um, just under four years. Um, we we have a brilliant and very innovative um, groundbreaking portfolio currently, as you can see in my presentation. Um, we started trading back in 2011, um, and um, we we were then trading as Next Step Systems. Um, we we rebranded our business in the first quarter of 2014, and um, named our business as FastCapital.com. Um, which is the web, website of hyperlink on your screen and what we have is 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 a really huge um, and big innovative portfolio at the moment uh, we have we have about 18 startups who have already graduated um, and then we have about 20 more in the pipeline and I, if if I can um, really say that in my humble opinion I think I cannot remember even one startup or technology incubator startup rather, where at the time of their launch they had nearly 40 active startups within their portfolio. So 20 which are going through incubation stage. We hope to actually incubate and add them into our investment portfolio by December this year. And obviously we are receiving large number of interest and a lot number of business plans on an ongoing basis. If you look at the global uh, um, uh, tech lands landscape what you will find is basically um, there are there are a number of incubators obviously and accelerators so it, the list starts from Y Combinator which is obviously by far the largest and obviously they have been in, in, in tech scene for over seven years now and then you've got Techstars and you have got um, um, if I um, you've got numerous um, other as, as well such as Dream Adventures and Angel Icon and Launchpad LA. Majority of these are United States based, but um, and none of them are global except Techstar, which recently launched um, a joint venture with Barclays uh, Bank in the UK. But what I'm, I want to focus on is the conversion rate. How many of these, um, what really sets us apart is that it, at, the, at the point of our launch in 2014, we already have nearly 40 startups and they range. They range from wide variety um, um, of sectors. So we've got um, app development. We have got um, virtual education. We have got cloud solutions. Um, we have got e-education. Um, our portfolio is very, very diverse. Um, um, and we're also, we have a um, mobile application, fleet management, app store created. We have got a specific. Um, 
um, startup which is called TV Lies focuses on um, television. So that's next generation TV broadcasting. Then we've got um, um, messaging for businesses and enterprises. So messaging and mobile messaging. We've got virtualized virtualization solutions. Um, so the, the, we have covered a lot of really innovative and, and groundbreaking areas within which we have developed our startups. And our portfolio is growing on a daily basis. I want to focus on a very key point here, uh, which I'm sure um, if you connect it with, with our proposition, you will find that we are very unique. Uh, for example, if you, look at the, if you look at the current landscape, tech landscape, well, say for instance, Y Combinator. Y Combinator since its launch uh, almost eight years ago, has, um, there, are, there have been about 1,000 startups which have been uh, through under their incubation program. And then you've got tech stars, which are obviously, they are, these are the top two when we talk about the valuation of the company and the number of company they were able to help, um, you know, to be able to, you know, um, reach IPO on a big exit level. Now, now there are just over 100 companies out of a thousand when we talk about Y Combinator who have been able to successfully exit and have had a major IPO. Um, on the other hand, tech stars, um, they have even lower ratio. Um, so the gap we saw is the very low, um, first lack of highly technical incubator. Um, here there are there are, as I said, there are in my. I was researching and prior to my speech, you know, there are 59 incubators in this country, in the UK, and there are probably four or five times in the US, Canada. They are actually everywhere, and I, I believe that they are popping out literally every day, one or two incubators. So, um, what we focus on is quality, and we, when we say quality, we mean it. We have um, very competent and a highly technical incubator. And, and we aspire to hit a very high conversion rate. So um, majority of incubators, they incubate 50 or even in most cases, 100 startups. But out of those, one just spins out and really makes it to the next level or highest level, which is a big IPO or exit. Otherwise, um, nine out of 10 or 99 out of 100, they incubate fail or do not scale up to the next level. We basically mean that is 1% conversion of success ratio. What we believe is cluster capital is ideally placed. Even we, our website went live a couple of weeks ago, and obviously um, it will be updated on a regular basis as we will be up, um, adding more and more startup as we process or uh, as we progress. But what, what I, will, I really want to emphasize, and I think it's a very key point, where, is at the time of the launch, um, I do not think in the living memory there, there is or there was any tech incubator or investment company which had 40 odd startups and they come from diverse range of tech space. They are not just focusing on one single thing. As I mentioned to, to yourselves um, a few minutes ago as to what the focus is, they are very, very unique. And some of our best startups already have very positive cash flow without needing any outside funding. Um, and um, some are actually creating a lot of interest uh, in various parts to, of the world where we are um, we, we operate. So uh, GCC region, Middle East, Europe, and United States. Um, so the, the approach um, majority of tech startups have at the moment is they, they're focusing on um, the, first of all, they, they in the management team or founding team, they look for technical experience. So you have to have technical experience. Um, um, if you or they are focusing on entirely fresh, straight out of university young graduates. Well, um, the trouble with with this is uh, is multifold um, trouble. The first trouble is why taking on fresh graduates uh, or good developers. Well, on the surface, it seems a very viable approach. However, what we believe at Buster Capital, and we firmly believe that there is a great untapped potential in the marketplace, um, which actually most incubators and accelerators, um, either they don't see it or they oversee it, or they totally ignore it. Um, and now I want to focus which, uh, 
the unexplored potential I just talked about. Now, the, if you if you have any knowledge of tech uh, tech startups or generally tech, you would appreciate that a tech startup primarily requires somebody who has already launched a tech startup, or if he or she hasn't launched, at least they have thorough knowledge of tech startups. Um, with this approach, straight out of university, young drivers fast. A, they haven't got an exposure to the marketplace. Um, second, they lack in technical knowledge and, and commercial and business acumen. These are the things which really makes and breaks um, a technical or internet startup given it has a very, very high failure rate. Nine out of ten internet startup fail. So what we have focused on is to focus um, since we have our, our backend team has got enormous amount of talent, we have got large number of highly competent technical uh, staff and professionals. We have focused on, on, on those people who are seasoned professional in a given industry. It could be finance, it could be healthcare, it could be tourism, it could be pretty much everything: engineering, biochemistry, biophysics, you know, space research, and. Um, so if someone has accumulated a decade long or, or more than that and they know that industry inside out and they have spotted a genuine which could convert into a huge business but they just don't have they have the business idea but they know how to uh, how to figure things out and where the, the what needs to be fixed or what needs to be amended to be able to to enhance an existing process um, but they don't really know how to build the product. So that's where we at Faster Capital believe that we have a unique advantage. We step in, we will build, we will build your website, we will build, we have the ability to build your mobile clients and we will cover your, um, all the other platforms which are necessary. And so here uh, we have accumulated uh, a world-class team which is based um, in, in many parts of the world and we are constantly growing. Currently, as I said, we are headquartered in Dubai and then obviously we have a um, UK office and then Spain and US and we are constantly growing. So we have access to a number of talented people in those regions. These people um, have launched a number of businesses. They are seasoned mentors and consultants and advisors. Plus on top of it, we have access to technical developers. And the best advantage we can offer is not only we are developing the venture, but we are actually investing money. So if you are an ambitious startup, but you haven't got money, then we can co-fund it. And also, uh, um, the, the worth of our technical support, i.e. the technical development, plus the, the complementary business services I talked about, um, plus access to these mentors, consultants, um, are actually well in excess of hundreds of thousands of US dollars, um, depending on how big or large a startup project is and how much time and effort it needs. But roughly, it can be anything in between in excess of 250 US dollars to half a million US dollars. Also, what we have introduced is a very unique mentor concept. It's called a stealth mentor. And what that means, basically, essentially what it means is we assign one main mentor for every, so we will pay every startup with a main mentor, but then there will be um, numerous hidden or stealth mentor. What, and what their job is, basically, is to give advice to the direct or main mentor, but they do not directly liaise with the startup. So, um, but just having this extra edge, a competitive edge, uh, which we as, a, as an incubator offer um, is huge because imagine a startup is actually supported by various people. Uh, of course, there's, the main mentor is the center point of contact and obviously he is visible. So he is liaising with faster capital and management team developers plus the startup founders or founder or founders depending on how many people um, will pitch up the idea. Uh, but the still mentor will continuously give advice to the direct mentor uh, and basically uh, they are from various sectors. They are the say for instance if a startup um, lacks um, if they if it wants to recruit competent people, world class talent, but they haven't got HR capability. I was one of our state mentors who is a specialist HR will stand. Hey, I will tackle this. Then marketing, say say for instance, marketing. When we talk about marketing, um, um, we have competent both um, 
main mentor plus a so student mentor will step into marketing background and he will say or she will say we I, this is how it should be this is what your marketing strategy business development uh, client services finance um, you know uh, product development um, and etc cetera, etc cetera. so what we have what we really believe is that our unique proposition which is to focus on non technical entrepreneurs to help build highly competent next generation emerging technological startup gives us unique advantage we are literally creating a lot of interest in, um, here in the uk where i'm based and obviously in the middle east and in the us we and obviously in other regions as well um, what we have found is uh, in the market gap we have found or we have seen which is very very evident is that a lot of time majority of incubators and accelerators um, um, basically focus on building technologies but not genuine products for which customers can can buy and pay for um, in our opinion um, you can build as many technologies as you like but if you can't build a genuine product which addresses people's needs you're not going to make money and you will fail so what we this is a huge gap so what we are focusing on and not only build we are focusing on not only building world class innovative technology and startups but we are focusing on building genuine technological products as well a winning technological products um which customers is, can start buying and paying for so in experience found founders really struggle because they can't figure out where the market is heading where the gap is or what needs to be refined and improved on which existing product needs to be refined and and what needs to be done they really struggle this area because they just don't have the acumen commercial acumen knowledge and capacity so although this approach has helped create some of the best companies we have however it still leaves a massive gap uh, for those startup which want to focus on a certain one or two segment or industry and monetize their ideas within the, those segments uh, um in, in a nutshell um we at fast capital believe that we are positioned uh, to take this um, to fill this void or gap market gap and really really take ourselves um, to to the level uh, we see that in about 5 to 10 years time we will be um, a really dynamic and global um, incubator and investment company and um, and we will rival some of the bigger names at the moment we are very confident with with our progress and very happy as well and um, the way things have shaped up nicely and um, we are adding new companies and receiving large number of business plans every day and we encourage any of the um you know upcoming technical startup people who want to build a great technology we encourage you to uh, go to our website which is www.fastcapital.com and choose entrepreneur section where you will be able to submit your your data your info um, a succinct business plan and a succinct executive summary which we will, will then evaluate um this topic is such a huge and it has many many things and um, uh, i wish i could talk uh, and i could really talk uh, about it for hours and hours but i'm really short on time so um at this stage i'd like to sort of um, sum up by saying that um um any of you who are actually listening this webinar and obviously i understand through the organizer that it will then be published on the european commission quarterly magazine and we will place on the european commission's website i would encourage you to actually promote our brand and let people know within the tech community regardless we are a global company already we have four global offices and we are growing and we aim to establish many offices in various parts of the world so we encourage you to actually spread the word and um, if you have a bright idea which you believe could become the next billion dollar business we encourage you to actually uh, some we are very reluctant to actually refuse a startup immediately um we we turn we turn to actually evaluate every idea and read every we don't just trash ideas we read every idea um, and as long as your idea i i e your business plan and your and your executive summary is clear enough we will take it on board and we will do everything we can to ensure that we can convert it into a minimum well so, so please um help us spread the word uh, submit these ideas and just generally help us in in you know promoting and leveraging 
uh, brand within our targets. Thank you very much. That really sums up the first session of um, this afternoon's uh, webinar. Um, now, I'm open to answering any questions you might have, um, and you've got 15 minutes Q&A session. Um, on your screen, you should be able to see um, a white um, box right at the bottom on the right-hand side where you can write your questions, and I will gladly answer it. And we really thank you very much for those um, to those who really joined this afternoon and listened, and um, and we really look forward to changing the the tech scene in the world. So feel free to post any question, um, and I'll gladly answer those. Thank you very much. Just a word, a quick um, caution is um, you can only write questions through the messenger. Um, box which is in the far right hand side of the screen. However, you cannot you cannot say, I won't be able to hear, you will be able to hear me, um, you'll be able to see me, uh, I'm sure you can, but you you will not um, you will not be able to you will not be able to actually say things which I can hear. But yeah, feel free to um, thank you Lex. I can see your comment. Thank you very much. And basically uh, yeah any questions I'm happy to answer. Thank you. So we have about 15 minutes from now. So say if we say half three, 75 minutes, so half three. Okay, so Lex, your question is, does faster capital accept technical team? Because as you mentioned, you are looking non-technical founder. Um, it really depends, to be honest. Um, how how much technical? Uh, I'm sure you you can hear me, Lax, right? So you, I want to clear, make it clear. Um, I mean, if you already have some technical expertise, we will not automatically reject you and say, well, you you know technical bits and pieces, therefore you are not the right match. You you see, the technical expertise is is uh, or technical skills are very very broad. So Say, for instance, you have a you have a business idea, and it's very sophisticated technology requires a lot of technical expertise and experience. And um, you might have uh, you might have some technical knowledge uh, or a technical team who might know um, quite a lot, but not exactly um, like um, everything which you need to be able to convert it into a minimum viable product or. A, a winning product, I should say. I think I must use winning product, which customers can really start buying and paying for. So, if you if you have an idea, and um, and basically you believe that you have you already have technical team on board, we would still, in, as I said, we have a we have a very high acceptance rate, and we do not discourage people um, to not to submit their ideas. So, if you go to our website and just look at the entrepreneur section. I would still encourage you to submit your business idea to ourselves, and uh, we will look into it. And obviously, um, when business idea submission through our, our website is just part of the process, we will personally get to know the founder or founders as well. So we will have um, we will get to know them deeply. You know, we will get we will get to know them through through Skype interview. We will have a look at their previous backgrounds through their LinkedIn profile. And then we will really get to know them deeply to, to gain an understanding if there is a if there is a match between the aspiring entrepreneur and faster capital. But what we believe is is if your if a, an aspiring entrepreneur's vision and commitment is similar to what we have, only then will we be able to succeed. So therefore, uh, by all means, feel free to submit your idea, even though if you believe that you have some technical dexterity and knowledge. And um, you might not have every, you might not have knowledge in everything, uh, you know. And so it's, uh, the areas where you perhaps lack to be able to build your idea into a product, an MVP, we can step in and we can jam together and really combine our strengths. I hope this answered my question, Max. Um, does it? Feel free to. Thank you. Is there any other questions um, from anyone? Okay, so. I've got a question from Mr. Mr. Ralph, uh, and 
um, how do one can apply for funding with faster capital? Okay, so um, part of it I've already answered, but I'm going to repeat it, Rob. Thank you for the question. Um, the way you apply for funding is um, the starting point is to really sit and um, and put your idea on on a simple A4, in only one page A4 um, executive summary. So basically summarizing what your product is, what your idea is, which invest industry or market you are uh, you are focusing on, what your target market, what need you are trying to address, and all those kind of things. So an A4 succinct executive summary and a succinct business plan is what we need, right? That's the step one. We then go to our global website. This is double, as you can see on the screen. It's fastercapital.com. Click on entrepreneur section and it has an online form. You fill the form, you see the details which we need and it will then automatically come to ourselves. So we will pick it up. And then from there, uh, the, the, the second step two is, is for, for ourselves. We will then read through your idea and decide if it's something which can really, which is basically um, a worth considering idea. If we feel that it's really a very crowded market, we will communicate that you might need to change your idea, refine your idea to make it much more presentable and something which can generate revenue and something which can which can convert into a minimum of other product. If we see if it's not quite it and if it's already a brilliant idea, we will immediately discuss the idea with you and we will uh, we will take it on board. Um, uh, more specifically with regard to funding, as I previously emphasized, Faster Capital does not um, give 100% cash funding. So for example, you, if you submit your idea, we like it and we see the industry is not crowded and we can convert it into a great product or at least a minimum MVP, we will take it on board. We will then estimate the, the potential or rough cost of the startup. Uh, we have a specialist people, professional, they, they will know. They will work out, the, so say for instance, if it comes to 500,000 US dollars uh, to, build, to build at least MVP, we will expect 50% of that from our startup entrepreneur or the person or persons who actually pitched the idea to ourselves. We will contribute 50, remaining 50%. So we have a 50-50 policy. So if, if, if the startup cost works out, $400, we will expect $200,000 from the startup founder, people who pitched the idea, and, then, and we will match it with another um, $200,000. So that's $200,000 times two is equals to 400K, which is the cost of MVP. And of course, um, we will not charge you for the business and support services. This is something we will supply on top of cash, 50% cash funding. So that's why we, if you look at the website, we have clearly mentioned in italic font that we co-fund and co-fund. In return for our, for our funding um, and our business support services and mentor and consultant, uh, we will ensure that you have everything you need. And all you need to do is just bring 50% cost of the idea and the idea. And we will take care of everything until we convert it to an MVP or a winning product. And obviously in return for our investment, we will take equity stake in the idea or in the business. I hope this answers uh, your question, though. Okay, so you've got another question. Um, okay, guys, uh, I have got very short amount of time since um, this, it was supposed to be a 40 minutes presentation webinar. So this should be the final question, hopefully. I wish I could answer more questions, but I'm really short of time. So last two questions uh, I will answer very quickly in five minutes. So the question I have is who will own the idea project if faster capital funds? So as I said, um, this is something we have to discuss nearer to the time. When somebody pitches an idea to ourselves, the idea will come to us. We, 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 once we estimate the cost, we will, we will then be able to give you a quote, a personalized quote, as to how much um, of the project or idea or startup we will own or, we, uh, or, or what kind of a percentage of equity we will take. It will depend on how long the idea will take, how much effort is required from our end, how many mentors, consultant, main mentor, strength mentor, plus cash funding we will deploy. Okay, and um, uh, and so it will vary. But um, if you look at on, on the F uh, frequently asked question or FAQ, 
as section on our website, you will see that it will range between 25% to 50% is there. But it does, it's, the list is, is not exhaustive and it might be less, it might be more depending on how much money we invest and how much effort we have to uh, put in we have, um, and obviously how, what kind of business support services we will deploy. There are lots of factors. I hope this helps um, Ralph. And the last question I will take is from Lex. And Lex is asking, does professional... Um, Okay, does First Capital willing to sign NDA? First Capital preferred B2C or B2B? What about the deal terms for founders to be incubated? Okay, so basically, again, Lex said, uh, uh, yeah, um, yes, we are a highly professional global organization. We believe in doing things in the right manner. We will not disclose anything to anybody, and we will happily sign NDA um, once we start. Once we start the formal process. Of actually considering. So the stage one is for you to submit. If we decide that we want to, we like your idea and we want to invest our time and money on your idea, we will then obviously do all the formal documentation. Um, we have a dedicated uh, legal counselor and solicitor in our team who will ensure that we sign the NDA. And then obviously, um, so we have no preference. Like in the last bit you, uh, of your question, you are asking me if we have preference for B2C or B2B. Um, uh, if you look at our current portfolio, you will see that there, there are many startups which are focused on directly B2B um, products, they are, and some are actually B2C. So we have no preference in terms of which startup we will fund, whether they will focus on B2B or B2C. As long as it's a great idea, which we feel can could potentially become the next big thing, and um, we will try everything to convert it into, into a winning product and service. Um, the last bit um, is obviously deal terms. Deal terms is something is far too early and premature for me to actually answer this question as to what will be the precise deal terms for founders who we will incubate. But this is something once we take the idea on board um, and uh, we have worked out the cost and we, we know and once we know how much we are spending cash funding plus our, our other resources, our complementary resources, plus we know how much founders are spending, we will then be able to give you a personalized quote or deal uh, for you to actually evaluate. It will be a happy, pleasant interaction and relationship. We are not going to force anybody to join us. The a founder can walk out uh, even after, when, once we have evaluated the idea and, and where we have pitched um, the proposition, our proposition as to how much we will invest and what equity we will take, you have all the rights um, to consider our offer and still walk away. And similarly, we have the right to reject an idea if we feel that that particular idea is is not something which is which is going to be, we will uh, help you with or we can help you with in terms of converting into a minimum viable product. I'm sorry, I have just run out of time. I wish to um, first of all thank you very much to the Erasmus members or EMA Association, part of the European Commission, and uh, the organizer, Mr. Rauf. And thank you for those of you who joined and actually asked the question. Um, just before I, I sign off, I'd like to thank you for your time. And I'd like to encourage you to promote our organization. You, your organization has got thousands of members in many countries. Um, what we are looking for at this stage is really build our brand and, uh, and, and really spread the word um, in many countries, so more people know about our organization. Um, so I would encourage you to really promote ourselves in terms of our branding and PR, and uh, take your time, let your friends know, let the wider tech community know, regardless of wherever they are. And uh, we look forward to building many amazing technological companies in the next many years to come. Thank you very much for your time, and have a good afternoon. Thank you.